of our 12 days or weeks of Christmas sewing, we're going to be making a pair of elastic waistband pants. There is a free pattern um, on patternsforpirates.com. They have a whole bunch of different sewing patterns there, but this is the walk the plank pants and it is a free sewing pattern that they offer. So you can go and um, download that pattern. They have an adult's version and a kid's version. This is the kid's um, toddler size three. And we are going to make these on the show today. And they're super easy to make. It's just a simple elastic waistband and mine are made out of flannel. These are great for those of you who want to do like um, matching Christmas jammies. You can do a pair of matching pants for everyone for Christmas morning or um, just for the holiday season. They're super quick and simple and easy and perfect for a beginner sewer. So let's get started. All right, so with these walk the plank pajamas and with any digital um, pattern, I just wanted to show you this little tip. So this is my kids walk the plank pajama bottom um, pattern, but I, and I've cut, I've taped it together and I've cut it out on one of the one of the sizes but if you don't want to have to reprint and cut it for all the sizes on the lines I have a really good easy um, solution so you can take freezer paper and that's what this is this is just freezer paper and I've just traced the size on here of freezer paper and now I have um, one of my sizes on freezer paper and then I still have my original pattern that I can still use for any size and it's not destroyed. Um, and so when I'm making these pants today, I actually needed to go up a size. So again, I didn't have the right um, pattern size because I'm making these for my child and you know, children grow really fast. So I needed the next size up. So this is actually another thing that I used to trace and cut so I didn't have to cut through my original pattern. And that is, this is actually, it's a lot like tracing paper, but it's actually that paper that they put on a doctor's table, like the bed when you go to a doctor's office, and it comes in just a, like a big roll like this, and it's perfect for tracing patterns. So it's pretty thin, and it's, it's see-through, like pretty see-through. It's perfect for tracing patterns. I got this on Amazon for about 10, around $10.00. If I can find a link, I'll link it in the description below, but this stuff's really great and it lasts for so long. <clears throat> so you can trace patterns really easily. And then just make sure when you're tracing your pattern that you write, you know, what size it is. So, um, like, I don't know if you can see, but you know, I wrote what size it was and the directions to like for this pattern to cut two mirrored images. Um, and you can, you can write like, how much of whatever else you need. Like, so for this pattern, you would need some elastic. So you could write how much elastic on the pattern size that you chose, but the original pattern then will still have the key and all that stuff. And you just write the information you need on your trace pattern. So two easy and fairly cheap ways to not have to keep taping and cutting the same original pattern. You can just trace on freezer paper, tracing paper, or like I said, this medical paper works really, really well. All right, let's get started. All right, so for today's um, pants pattern, you don't need very many supplies at all. You will need a piece of elastic um, that matches whatever your pattern size is. So for my particular size, I'm doing this size three for my son. That requires 20 inches of elastic. Now it says to get um, like one and a quarter elastic for that size, but all I have is one inch and I haven't found that to be a problem even for my adult pants. So I just use the one inch elastic. Um, so I have a 20 inch piece of one inch elastic. Again, you'll have to cut yours to this, whatever size it specifies for the size um, of pants that you're making. And then you just need two um, of your pattern cut out. You want mirrored images. So if you cut, I usually just cut um, folding my fabric in half and that way I can just cut around this whole thing one time and then I have my two pieces of, of the pants. 
um, and they will be mirrored images. So you need, if you cut both of them from the front, say you lay out your pattern piece on the fabric and you cut it once and then you just slide your pattern over and you cut it again, you won't have a mirrored image and you're gonna end up with two left legs or two right legs and you won't have the, the, the right thing. So you need mirrored images. So one cut on the front, one cut on the back. The easiest way to do that is to just fold your fabric in half, lay it nice and flat and just cut around the whole thing one time and that will give you a mirrored image. Um, if you're doing a, a pattern like mine where there's like right side up, obviously if I cut it like this, it would be upside down and my dogs, um, it would, my pants would be upside down. So if you're doing a pattern that has a right side up image, make sure that you, if you fold your fabric, that both sides, the image is right side up. Okay, so you need two pieces, a right leg and a left leg and the elastic. Now we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and with right sides together, first thing we're going to do is match up the inside of the leg. So we're gonna fold over one of the pieces of fabric and we're gonna sew along the inside of the leg. And we're gonna do that for both legs. And then um, from there we'll sew the crotch seam and then we'll do the elastic and the hem and we'll be done. It's a very quick project. So let's go over to the sewing machine and we'll do that first. I'll see you over there. Okay, so before we actually sew this, it's good to put what's called a memory hem. You just wanna fold up the hem, so this is the bottom of the pants, by um, one inch. And that just puts it, and then press it. And that puts a crease there so that later when we go to hem, it's kind of already naturally folds up and it's just easier to hem. Um, so on each of your leg pieces, just fold the bottom hem up one inch and press, okay? And then from there you can unfold. You don't need it to stay, you just want that crease in there, okay? And now we're going to go and we're going to do the inseam of the leg. And you're going to sew from that crotch curve, okay? the tip of the crotch curve down to the leg, just this nice inseam. And you want to sew, we're gonna use a half inch seam allowance, and then you also need to finish your edges. So you're gonna sew a straight stitch at a half inch seam allowance, but then this woven fabric will fray. So like, I'm using flannel, so if you're using a woven, it's going to fray, so you need to finish your edges. You either need to do a zigzag stitch around your edges afterwards, or you can use a serger I can just use my serger and serge those edges. So um, it's best to use, um, to not just use a serger on this woven. It's best to use the sewing machine for the straight stitch and then finish the edges with a serger. Um, but you have to finish the edges one way, with, one way or another, either with a serger or with a zigzag stitch. So to start, I'm going to do my half inch seam allowance and I'm going to uh, back stitch at the beginning and go down the whole leg. Okay, back stitch to end. Okay, now I have my straight stitch. Now I can go into my zigzag stitch. So I'm going to select a zigzag, a nice wide zigzag, and I'm going to go right along the edge. Okay, so here's my seam, and I'm just gonna go along the edge just so that that doesn't fray. Again, make sure you backstitch to start and end. Okay. So now you can see that I have a zigzag stitch along the side and still I have my regular straight stitch as my seam allowance. Okay, so do that for the first leg and then do it for the second leg. Okay, now you need to take one of your legs and turn it right side out. Okay, and you are going to stick that leg inside of the other leg and we are going to match up this like 
crotch curve and the seam we just sewed. Okay, so I'm putting one leg inside the other one so that now the fabrics are right sides together. Okay, now it looks like I have just one leg here. And you're going to find the seam that you just sewed for both legs and you want to match those up and clip your pin in place. Okay, and then go up and we're just going to line this whole curve up. So you want to find the top of the curve and pin that in place. And then maybe another one right here. And then go back along up the other side. Okay. Now you can see here that the notches should be lining up. The notches are the back side, the double notch. You should have a front notch too, but this is a single notch. Okay, so there I have my crotch curve and I'm just going to sew all the way around that crotch curve now. Same thing, half inch seam allowance and I'm going to zigzag the edges. Make sure you go back to a straight stitch. Again, you want to go over the edges with a zigzag. I'm actually going to just search mine real quick because it's faster for me. Okay, now I have the crotch curve is fully sewn on my pants. I'm going to set that aside for a second and I'm going to grab my elastic. You want to fold or bend your elastic and just overlap it just a little bit, like maybe by about half an inch. Okay, make sure it's not twisted at all. And we're gonna do with a wide zigzag stitch, you're going to zigzag over that elastic to um, hold it in place so that you're creating a circle for the waistband. Back stitch over it a few times, go forward and back a few times, just so that it's nice and secure, okay? So now you have a circular waistband. Now we're going to quarter this so that we can put it on our pants centered. So this seam that we've just created here where we sewed together, we're just gonna put a clip or a pin there or you can um, draw it. Basically, you just wanna make a mark and you wanna find exactly the opposite side. So we're break, making this um, like in half. So you wanna mark the halfway point with another clip or pin or mark. Okay, so now I have the front and the back and then I just turn it, flip it, and I line up the front and the back clips, and that gives me a, cor a, a quarter of the circle for the side seam. Okay, do it on that side, make sure these are still aligned, and then mark the other side. Oops. And now you have your circular waist broken up into equal four equal parts, the quarter, a quarter, okay? Now, we're gonna do the same thing with the pants. So they're still inside out, so you wanna pull them right side out. Okay, so now they are right side out. And you can just kind of pinch the sides, and that will show you where the back is. The back is higher than the front. So you can see that the back kind of arches up here. So that's the back of my pants. And I'm going to match the back seam and the front seam together. That way I know that's the back and front center. I don't really need to clip those because there's seams there already, so I already know. But I do want to find the quarter point, the halfway point on the side. So I'm making sure the front and the back seams are together and then I can smooth this out and find and mark this halfway or quarter point on the side. And we're gonna match that with the elastic point. Same thing on the side of the elastic. Now do the same on the other side of the pants. 
front and back seams are centered for the sock. Now I have my four points on my waist and my four points on my elastic. Okay, from there you're going to match up the top of your elastic to the top raw edge of the waist of your pants. Now I'm going to match the back seam where I had sewed the elastic together to the back seam on my pants and I'm going to use that clip to clip it down in place. Okay, make sure that you your elastic is not twisted, make sure it's nice and flat and you're going to take your the front clip and match it to the front seam of your pants. Okay, make sure that the raw edge is matching up with the top of the elastic and that it's not twisted. And this elastic is going on the inside. Okay, so it's on the inside, the wrong side of the pants. Now you can take your quarter spot on your elastic and your pants, which are, would be like the side seam, match those two clips up and clip that one in place. Do the same with the other side, lining the clips. Okay, now I have my four quarter points all together, but it's still pretty baggy in here and if I start sewing, I might screw up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold where I have two of my clips and I'm going to stretch only my elastic. Don't pull your fabric, just carefully pull your elastic until that, that fold goes away, okay? Just until it goes away. And then I kind of use my pin fingers and I just kind of pinch to hold it in place and we're gonna clip there, okay? So now I have an extra clip in between those two and I'm gonna go around and do that in between all my points. So again, holding my two fingers, finding a spot and just stretching it till, it, till it's just about even and then I clip there. Again, pulling those two very carefully just until it's flat, holding that in place with my fingers, clipping there. And do that one more time. This just makes sure that your waistband gets sewn on evenly. Okay, now if you're new and you want even more help, you can see that there's still some there, so you could even do it again in between each of those smaller ones. That'll just really make sure that you get this waistband on evenly. I'm not going to do that just because I'm confident enough to be able to just pull it carefully as I sew. All right, so then you're going to take this to the machine and you're going to use a zigzag stitch on here. You have to use a zigzag or a stretch stitch um, or if you use a serger, you can use a serger, just don't use the blade. Um, you, because this elastic has to be able to stretch. If you use a straight stitch, it's going to, if you stretch this waistband, it's going to pop the stitch. So you've got to use a zigzag or a stretch stitch. Okay, so I'm going to start like at the back seam and I'm going to pull my elastic just enough so that it's flat while I'm sewing. Okay, so I've got my zigzag stitch and I'm going to uh, back stitch in the beginning. Okay, now I go between the first two and then I kind of just pull it a little bit between this clip and, and where I am just until the fabric lies flat and the elastic is flat on it. Just pulling a little, don't yank it or you're gonna end up pulling it out. And you kind of wanna use your other hand to, you don't wanna, you don't wanna pull that side either, but you wanna hold it securely so that you don't yank this side off, but that you're not like bending your needle. So just pull just slightly until this is flat and use your, your other hand to help guide, but just, very um, gently, just pull just gently. Okay, now I'm to my next clip. So before I unclip that, I'm going to grab where my other clip is and just pull so that's all nice and flat. Take that clip off and keep sewing. Okay, I'm up to my next clip, so I'm going to skip this one, grab my next clip area pull till it's nice and flat and then I can take this one off and I won't be screwed up and then so okay I'm near my other 
next clip now, so grab the one behind it, pull, it's nice and flat, take that off. That's where I started, so I'm going to make sure to back stitch, especially with the stretchy thing like that. Okay, there, now my elastic is sewn onto the inside of the waist. Okay, so now what you're going to do is, here's my back, you're going to fold this down and you want to fold it right on the edge of that elastic. So I fold it and I kind of make sure it's, kind of roll with my hands, make sure it's right on that edge. I'm just going to clip it a couple times just to make sure that it's like on the front and back seam where there's actually the seam line. Okay, and then... You're going to sew down along the edge, the bottom edge, which was the top edge and now is the bottom. And you can use a straight stitch on this because you're going to be pulling and it's going to, it's not, the elastic isn't going to stretch any more than when you sew it down. So it won't actually um, pop, the, pop the thread if you do a straight stitch, but you can do a straight stitch, you can use a double needle, a zigzag stitch just to stitch this down. And you wanna go uh, about a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric. Now, make sure that you're not sewing it down like this, all bumpy. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth when you're sewing it. That way, afterwards, it'll be nice and evenly ruffly, <laughs> ruffled, okay? Um, and it won't stretch and break the thread later. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just making sure this is nice and flat as I put it under my foot. And I'm just starting on that back seam. Again, I'm like a quarter inch away from that, fin that finished edge we created. So I'm gonna move my clip and make sure I'm on, the, I'm gonna do a straight stitch. I'm gonna do a slightly longer straight stitch. So I'm gonna do like three and a half. And then you want to back stitch to start and then every few inches you're gonna you want to like make sure you're pulled flat again okay so make sure you're nice and even and flat but again you have to kind of hold back here too because if you just yank forward you could bend your needle so just kind of have a little bit of um like counter pressure on the back side Okay, I'm gonna readjust and make sure this is straight here. I'm not pulling like so far, but just enough till it's straight and flat. And then you can just kind of pull a little and it'll even out all those little ruffly elastic waistband folds. Okay? Now the last thing we have to do is hem the bottoms. So what you want to do is you can use your serger or a zigzag stitch and go just go right along the raw edge of both of the bottom of the leg pieces just to finish that off so it doesn't fray. So I'm going to use my serger. And get you to all right so I'm gonna use my serger and just serge those edges real quick again you can just use a zigzag stitch if you want
into the other leg. Okay, and now your hem should already kind of naturally fall back into place because remember we pressed it to start with so that there should still be like a fold there at that one inch spot so it should kind of just fold back into place you can press it again or mine looks like it's fine enough to just sew and you're just going to stitch right along the edge there um, like a quarter inch from the edge just so you're catching it all the way around all right so let's go back to the sewing machine and top stitch that hem and then we'll be done make sure i have yeah my, mine's at a three and a half so that's a good stitch length for me for top stitching i can just feel with my fingers like where that edge of the fabric is to make sure that i'm catching it in my seam or in my stitching done one more leg and I'm all done okay give it a quick press and you have a nice little pair of elastic waistband pants or jammies so there you have it a cute little pair or big pair if you made the adult size of elastic waistband jammies. You can make all sorts of these for people in your Christmas list and they will be nice and cozy. Thanks for joining me on this week's episode of the 12 days or weeks of Christmas. Until next time, happy sewing.